Be back on the show. Mike Sempervivi here in the big host chair. Brian Alvarez, we don't know where he's at today. This is Wrestling Observer Live. Did you guys like my chomping on the chips yesterday? Are you big ASMR fans? Well, guess what? I got a little bit more for you as I open up this drink to get ready for this show. <laughs> Did you like that, everybody? All right. Without any other further ado... As I take a sip of this blueberry Red Bull, a man who needs no energy drinks would never dare put an energy drink in his body. Too healthy for that. And frankly, too good to be on the show when I'm hosting it. Ladies and gentlemen, live and direct from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Lance T. Storm. Lance, how are you? I'm doing well, although I am I have turned into a bit of a coffee junkie since since uh, being home so long. So uh, I may not be the energy drink guy, but I am a Tim Hortons coffee guy. And I see you're you're not in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You're in your uh, the, the wonderful confines of uh, Kayfabe, Washington. Yeah, I'm in the big boy chair literally today. So uh, filling in for Brian, both uh, figuratively and literally. Well, that's good because you may get a, a mention in your ear to start taking over the show after the next break from Dom, just all depending on how this one goes. But uh, I thank you very much for, for joining me today and, and giving Brian the day off here. And, you know... Lance, it was a long day yesterday. Um, how's your territory doing? Uh, it was a little rough down here. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know for people if if AEW and NXT last night were welcome additions or if they were ignored in favor of real world things that were taking place here in the United States. But uh, I know you got a chance to see most of NXT like I did, as well as all of AEW. Any overall thoughts on last night? Uh, yeah, I'm not usually an NXT viewer because it's harder to get here. I actually watched it right before the show. And like you, I didn't quite finish the main event. And I'm going to as soon as I'm done with you here because that's the kind of wrestling that I really like. Just, you know, the mat work, the trading of holds, just it felt like a real sports contest. I'm a big fan of both guys. And, and I was really enjoying that match. So I'm anxious to go back and finish the main event because those guys are just top notch. You know, I'd have to go back and kind of like look at, at segments from from past times. But that may have been the best head to head as far as matches go in in Wednesday Night War history. I mean, they counter program, not even counter programmed. You just put your best foot forward there for your main event. And both sides certainly did it. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, what got everybody's attention? Because from what I saw, I mean, it's Balor and O'Reilly, and from what I, it wasn't, it didn't feel as epic as the first match. But then again, I haven't seen the end as is what yet too. But with that said, I mean, it was still a hell of a match. And for me personally, being a little bit more old school and enjoying mat work a little bit more, I mean, for as much as people were hyping up Phoenix and Kenny Omega, and make no mistake, that was an awesome match. You know, we'll find out what you think here, but. You know, O'Reilly and, and Balor, you can't put them in the ring and not get something out of it that's not going to be awesome. Yeah, and considering, you know, AEW, or sorry, NXT's audience does tend to skew older, that puts them closer to your and I age group that likes that mat style work that leans towards like of the two matches, I do prefer the Kyle O'Reilly, Finn Balor style of match. So I think NXT probably served its audience well, and obviously the the younger audience loves the Kenny Omega Ray Phoenix stuff, which was spectacular. So it'll be interesting to see who uh, who wins the night. Uh, I'm afraid it may be the news, unfortunately, but uh, we will we will see. What did you think about uh, how everything went down with AEW last night? I mean, we, we've seen it for years, you know, in, in wrestling beatdowns and group faction beatdowns. You know, they really picked up steam during the Monday Night Wars era with uh, the NWO beating people down, putting up the, the hand signal, the Wolfpack hand signal on into Bullet Club and New Japan and, and everything it meant there. And then we see... The next extension of this, the Good Brothers show up. Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows showed up on Impact last night at the end, out there helping to beat down John Moxley uh, alongside the Young Bucks, who also came out, as well as Kenny Omega and Don Callis. Um, you know, for a lot of people in, in New Japan, it's gotten long in the tooth, and they've gotten tired of it. When it comes to AEW, a lot of people have been waiting on this, waiting to see if we get Gallows and Anderson in there, and waiting to see if we, quote, 
quote unquote, get the band back together. Uh, what did you think about the post match angle and the beat down? And are we probably readying ourselves for week after week after week of people on Impact and AEW laying there in a ditch? <laughs> I don't think so. But I, again, I. Th- I liked it. Now, I should preface this by saying, for some reason, my audio kicked out for the main event, so I couldn't feel it, but... Chris Jericho burned it out by screaming so much. Could be, yeah. But (laughs) I did like the angle. I liked the fact that they gave us the clean finish on the main event. They didn't give us the BS of the, the Good Brothers or anybody else coming out first. They delivered, and I think that's important. And I think that can be the difference maker for AEW to not overdo this. Still deliver the clean finishes we want. Then if you want to do that angle, that's great. I don't understand yet the Young Bucks coming out and two sweeting with them. That seemed out of nowhere for me, but I thought the Good Brothers were a, a nice influx. And, and I'm anxious to see where this goes. Started off pretty odd, too, with the Young Bucks and SCU uh, against the hybrid and the acclaimed. Uh, I know Dave has been big on private party. You know, he loves the, 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 the moves and has been on them for a while. Top flight also as well, too. I mean, and, and you obviously you see it with, with both of those uh, teams, how well they could do. But I've been a little bit more partial to the acclaimed and it, it, I don't know. I don't think it's the hip hop thing. I don't, I, I don't know. I just look at them and I see a whole package that they don't really have the ability, obviously uh, to have the spectacular move set that, that either private party or top flight do. But I think overall all around, if they can come along in the ring, I mean, I love the package and the presentation and the presence, uh, especially that Max Castor has already. You know, as a guy that's trained a lot of people and, and obviously watch a lot, you know, what do you think about the acclaimed uh, as it stands right now, you know, in there with those three other veteran tag teams? And do you see what I see or, or am I really kind of overselling it a little bit uh, and getting blinded by a little bit of the shininess? Um, I think the verdict's a little bit out on how far they can go, but I am, like you, a big fan of them. And I think as heels, they don't need to have quite the spectacular set of moves that some of the other guys do. I actually, I did a NWA Legends Fan Fest training camp years ago, and Max Cash was one of the guys there, and I thought he had potential then. And that, you know, probably five years ago now, I, I could be off by a year or two, but... He showed potential then. He was a really nice guy, very respectful. So I'm very happy he's given that shot. And I think that's a tribute also to AEW's tag team division, which I've always been a fan of tag teams, way back to, you know, Midnight Express days. They've got a lot of teams. They've got a lot of young teams. And it's like they're not wasting them and overexposing them. It's like they're making you want more with each team. And I think that's great. That's I love tag team. I hope the Crockett Cup comes back, you know, and it probably won't be this year with everything going on. But, in, you know, with the NWA and, and, and everything, I I thought this would would have been a great year for it with, with Gals and Anderson and Impact and some of the things and, you know, that, that you may be able to do in concert with Ring of Honor or something like that. I hope that's a concept that comes back. And that's the one for me personally, that's the biggest thing that AEW can deliver, at least inside the ring. There's lots of changes they can make in the business outside the ring. And I think we saw that last week when it came to Brody Lee and some of the declarations made about how they are going to continue to support Brody Lee's family uh, after everything that took place. So there's differences they can make outside the ring, but inside the ring, as a fan of tag team wrestling, as somebody that was so influenced by the Rock and Roll Express and the Russians and the Midnight Express and the Fantastics and all those sorts of teams, you know, tag team wrestling can be main event wrestling. I, I, I agree, you know, and I believe that with all of my heart. Now, is it exactly what the promotions may want? In WWE, that's been a no. And historically in pro wrestling, that's been a no. In AEW, considering that it's one of the, the, the biggest tag teams in the world in the last 20 years to start the company, obviously that's not the case. And the way they're stacking things up, they have a ton of teams at their disposal right now and a ton of young teams that are, are looking to learn. And that's the one big thing. The one big takeaway I hope uh, that AEW delivers is bringing tag team wrestling back and making it a more permanent part of the wrestling main event uh, landscape. But. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, 
Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.